Hello everyone, this is Grade 6, Module 6, Lesson 9, Problem Set. Um, so, question 1, we have our lesson summary up above that we can take a look at, and uh, there's a little bit about absolute deviation and then mean absolute deviation. Um, and the big ones that we want to focus on are the small MAD and uh, large MAD. Um, when it's small, mean absolute deviation means that the data distribution has little variability, meaning the uh, data is going to be similar to each other. There's not going to be huge spread between them, whereas the large mean absolute deviation means that there's going to be uh, more change in what the data looks like. So we want to keep that in mind when we're doing these questions. So we'll start out with uh, question one. Suppose the dot plot on the left shows the number of goals a boys soccer team has scored in six games so far this season. The dot plot on the right shows the number of goals a girls team has scored in six games so far this season. The mean for both of these is three. So I know that they're both three. So as I look at this, um, and I'll zoom in so I can actually see, looks like the girls are between two and five and the boys have scored between 0 and 7. When their mean is both 3, I can see that the spread, there's more spread on the boys' team than there is on the girls' team, meaning uh, how far apart the data is. So uh, B or A says, before doing any calculations, which dot plot has a larger MAD? Explain how you know. Well, I know that the boys uh, have a larger MAD or mean absolute deviation because their data is much more varying than the girls is. So that's what I'll put down for my explanation. So there's my statement right there. Uh, B says use the following tables to find the mean absolute deviation for each distribution. Round your calculations to the nearest hundredth. So the first thing I have to do is find absolute deviation. And we know that deviation is how far away uh, each point is from the mean, which would be 3. Those are done in negatives and positives. So we're not looking at that. We're looking at absolute deviation. But deviation means I would take 0, and I know it's 3 jumps from the mean of 3. And since the data point is lower, it'd be negative 3 uh, for 0. But this is looking for absolute deviation, meaning we find the absolute value of that. So it, it doesn't matter. Uh, that it's less than or greater than the mean, the only thing that really matters is how far away from the mean are they. So I know that uh, for zero, they're both three away. And again, if it were just deviation, it'd be negative three, but since it's absolute, we're looking for the absolute value of those. Three is zero away, three is zero away, five is two away, and seven is is 4 away. So now I can calculate that and I can add those up to get my sum which is going to be 12 because I'm adding my absolute deviations. Now the girls, I see that they're 1, 1 because 2 is 1 away from 3 and 3's are right on with the mean and the 5 is 2 away. So if I add those up they only have 4. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the sum uh, of the absolute deviation and then I divide it by the number of data points. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I see that my answer is 2. So my mean absolute deviation is 2 for the boys. Now I'm going to slide over for the girls' side and they have a total of 4. And we know that we have six data points that we're talking about. So I know I'm going to go into a, a decimal, and it looks like it's going to be repeating. So i got to keep bringing down. So uh, what I end up being, and I need to go out to um, round to the nearest hundredth, so it means I got to go out to the thousands and round, and I know six is going to round this one up to seven. So 
their mean absolute deviation for girls is 67 hundredths. So based on the computed MAD values for which distribution is the mean a better indication of a typical value. And um, we want to go with the girls team because the measure of their variability is less. It's 67 hundredths as a MAD as opposed to the boys which is higher at 2 for their mean absolute deviation. So there's my answer statement right there. Now, we're going to go on to the next. So here is page two, and we're going to look at question three. I'm going to skip two right now. So three says, consider the following data on the number of gel, uh, green jelly beans in seven bags sampled from each of five different candy manufacturers. And we have the name of them right here. Note that the mean of each distribution is 42 uh, green jelly beans. So what I need to do now is take a look at A, and it says complete the following table of the absolute deviations for seven bags for each candy manufacturer. So I'm, I'm taking these numbers from this chart and finding the difference with the mean of 42. And because it says absolute deviation, I'm just finding how far away it is from 42. I'm not determining whether it's negative or positive because it doesn't matter because we're looking for the absolute value. So uh, that's why for awesome, if we look at bag one, it's 40, it's two away. It should be a negative two, but because it's absolute deviation, we're working with positive numbers. So what I'm going to actually do, uh, I find easier, is I'm going to work down. So I'm going to do all the bags. So I'll do bag one, and I see that i got to be right here at Sweeties, 36, and I'm looking at 42. So I'm going to write that big over here. How far away is 36 to 42? It's 6. Then 33 to 42 is 9. And I'm looking at finest right there, 36 to 42, 39 to 42, 36 to 42. So that's what I'm going through and doing right now to fill in my chart. It's how far away or the difference between uh, the number in the chart compared to the mean, which is 42. So I'm going to go through and fill the rest of these in uh, as quickly and as accurately as I possibly can because it's important to have uh, all of this correct going forward with my next series of questions. So those are my values right there. Um, and I know uh, on the next page uh, we have another question in there. And uh, what we're going to do is take a look at that right now. So let's go over to page 3. So we're here on page 3, um, and I'm going to bring in my chart that I already filled out because we already did the absolute deviation. So there it is right there, um, and I put it on top because I want to look at this chart. It says, based on what you learned about mean absolute deviation, which fact... Uh, manufacturer, do you think will have the lowest mean absolute deviation? Calculate the mean absolute deviation for the manufacturer you selected. So I want to find the one that has the lowest, meaning um, if I, I could do a calculation to find that out by adding up all of these values across for yum and doing the same for sweeties, finest, delight, and, and awesome. But what I can actually look for, which will help me out a lot more, is which one has the lowest numbers. And I see Awesome has 2, 2, 1, 1, 4, uh, which are low numbers, very close to 0. I have 6, 3, 2, and 7, but I got some in here in the 20s, 16, 
uh, 9. So I can kind of cross these ones out because they have high absolute deviations, meaning that their mean absolute deviation is going to be high. So I'm looking for ones with low values. And I'm going to select uh, Awesome, and I'm going to find the mean absolute deviation for it because I have a 2, a 2, a 1, a 1, and a 4. So I add those up, and uh, I'm going to get 10. And there's 7 bags. So... Uh, or seven bags, which is seven pieces of data. So now I'm going to divide that, and I'm going to come up with my mean absolute deviation to um, see how low this actually is. Looks like this one's going to go for a while. I'm going to stop right there. Um, and there's my mean absolute deviation. And I'm actually going to round it to the nearest hundredth. Uh, so I have 1 and 43 hundredths is my mean absolute deviation for awesome. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching and good luck on the rest of your problem set.